Thanks for joining me as we get a good drug picture of the oxytotics. Oxytocin and carbitocin are intravenous or intranasal drugs that mimic the actions of the endogenous hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin and carbitocin directly affect the neurotransmitter sites that stimulate the contraction of the uterus. So they're primarily used to cause contraction of the uterus to commence labor, to increase the speed of labor, and to stop bleeding following delivery of the child. Oxytocin was discovered in 1952 and it's still on the World Health Organization list of essential medications. In order to really understand the actions of the medicine oxytocin, we simply need to understand the most important biological functions of the hormone oxytocin. So let's do that. In order to give birth to the child, the mother's cervix needs to dilate and the pregnant uterus needs to contract. And oxytocin is primarily responsible for those processes. So the most profound increase in oxytocin levels comes just before labor. And if the mother is breastfeeding in the first few weeks after labor as well. And during that first time, during the labor, the oxytocin does several things. It, it not only contracts the uterus, it dilates the cervix, but it also gets into the fetal brain and prepares the fetus for the birthing process and, and helps reduce the vulnerability of the fetus to the hypoxic shock and other shock. The burst of oxytocin at labor is also a really important thing in letting down the breast milk of the mother. And, and it also strengthens the bonding experience between mother and child. And then in turn, the continued suckling of the mother's breasts is major stimulus for more maternal oxytocin production. So you can see from that short description, what happens right before, during, and after birth of the child, we can understand the main uses of oxytocin and also understand the areas of medicine for which oxytocin is being investigated for possible use. So obviously we do use oxytocin during that time to aid in the delivery of the child. But as you can see with the actions of oxytocin on the fetal brain and the brain of the mother, there are profound effects of oxytocin on the brain. Oxytocin can reduce fear and anxiety. It can decrease stress hormones. Oxytocin has an antidepressant action. And it's being investigated for the treatment of autism and also drug and alcohol dependence. So oxytocin hasn't been approved for uses around those actions yet, but do expect that some oxytocin and oxytocin-like drugs will be approved in the future. Oxytocin has largely replaced ergometrine as the primary agent to increase uterine tone in acute postpartum hemorrhage and to be used in difficult deliveries. But oxytocin and ergometrine can be used in combination in very difficult deliveries. Uh, ergometrine has a longer lasting contraction of the uterine muscles than oxytocin. And the problem is though, when they're used com in combination, there is a greater incidence of side effects than you would have with just the oxytocin. For instance, there is a possibility of sustained contractions after the birth of the child. The side effects of oxytocin alone are relatively uncommon. There's nausea, vomiting, and abdominal discomfort as being the most 
common side effects. And a couple of side effects, you'll kind of have to understand the other actions of oxytocin in order to understand these. But oxytocin, when given in fairly large doses, can cause hypertension and it can also cause water toxicity. And the reason is because oxytocin is very structurally similar to ADH, the water saver. ADH and oxytocin are both released out of the posterior pituitary gland, but both of them have a fairly structural, uh, a fairly close structural similarity, and there is some water-saving properties of oxytocin. Also, oxytocin is contraindicated when the fetus is in distress or it's positioned abnormally. And just remember that continuous electronic monitoring of the fetus is necessary when it's used during labor. And now you know. Thanks for joining us.